This is the beauty though. We have ports are back. Ports are back. Yeah. And then on this side, the magic happens. Full size HDMI, no dongle. No dongle. No dongle. And an SD card slot. Yeah. Yeah. On a MacBook Pro. That's what a MacBook Pro is. No dongle. Look how Apple does it with the chime straight away. Look how Apple does it. Look at that. Hold this enter. You walk past and you knock into it. Yes. Let's get the big display out. Couple more pixels. 16 inch boots up on the chime as well. It was when you found out you could make mistakes that you knew you were onto something. So I have the new uh, MacBooks. Yeah, the ones everybody's talking about. M1, Pro, Max. I don't have the Max models, not yet. I have the Pro models. That's all right. Who needs a $7,000 laptop? I don't know, probably no one. Uh, these are a huge improvement. I'm just kidding, by the way. If you get the Max, I'll probably get the Max model eventually. It's just, it's, you definitely need to be making money using those laptops to have any chance of justifying those improvements in performance. The regular M1 stuff is already incredible, but these, the cost of performance ratio, I think we have the entry level 14 and the entry level 16, and Kirk can't wait to get inside one of these and start chopping something up. <laughs> I like the fact that we have a new form factor. I like the fact that we have new ports. Let's take these over to the table and see what they're all about. Number two, st <laughs> it's like we're in a video game and each step has another clue. Love mankind, trust the majority and never owe anyone. These are Willie Doo's fortune cookies from TNT. And they're some, they're some of my favorite fortunes I've ever seen. A lot of them are complex. There's like some good Samaritan one that screwed me up. I thought about it for the whole day. The 14 is what I'm most excited about because now you're getting the graphics performance that the Pro model has always stood for, but in something that's way lighter, it's like three and a half pounds compared to the typical four and a half. So look at that. 14 inch model, 16 inch model. 16 gigs unified memory, one TB storage. This one is 16 gigs unified memory, 5, 12 GB storage. And funny enough, for, for some reason, we got the uh, greater storage in the 14 inch. But otherwise, I think they're basically the same, right? 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, yeah. So let's do the 14 first, since for me, this is the interesting form factor for a MacBook Pro. No, we don't. Yes, we do. And there is something special always about a MacBook Pro unboxing experience. Apple knows how to do this. Just the right amount of tension on the lid. They tried to hide the notch on the front with this really dark background. I would, I would have done the same. This is the space gray model. It's also available in a silver. And now it's very dense. It doesn't feel as light as they say it as it is on paper. The Apple logo is huge as well. That's an immediate takeaway. It is super cold to the touch. Space gray aluminum. Yeah, that is a big Apple logo. They are doubling down. It's got this kind of like slab look to it now. Very flat edges. You know, I like this actually. I think I'm gonna be the 14 inch guy this generation, this time around. This is the beauty though. We have ports are back. Ports are back. Yeah. MagSafe is back for charging, for faster charging. Two Thunderbolt ports, USB type C capable, obviously. We have some analog audio for your headphones. And then on this side, the magic happens. Full size HDMI, no dongle, no dongle. No dongle. Another type C Thunderbolt connector. And then of course, is this a Thunderbolt? Three Thunderbolts on here? Or is one of them just a regular type C? Three Thunderbolt four ports. Lovely. So both sides, versatility where you set up your peripherals. No dongle. And an SD card slot. Yeah. Yeah. 
on a MacBook Pro. That's what a MacBook Pro is. It has feet on it too. Look at that for cooling. Nice little rubber feet and a, a fairly nice size here. So it's gonna sit off the desk a little bit. That is an alteration. That's a change. Also says MacBook this Pro on the bottom. Look at that. Chopped in there. Sick. No dongle. A little bit of paperwork, probably including Apple stickers because I saw people posting about them in black, by the way. Is there a clean way to do it? Ninety-six watts. Simple power brick Type C connector. Still got the removable nub if you want to use or buy an extension for that. Also in the package, your Type C on one end to your MagSafe on the other, and it's a braided style of cable. And this is the magic right here of MagSafe. Look at that. Hold this end, Kirk. You walk past and you knock into it. Yes. Laptop saved. Such an amazing innovation and it should have never gone anywhere. And now it's back. I mean, this is really, it's all the things that were missing from previous generations of MacBook Pros. And then now they're here. It's MagSafe, it's SD, it's HDMI. It's like exactly what that fortune you just read off the top. That's mm. what. Apple's doing with that. I didn't plan it like that with the fortune, by the way. It was when you found out you could make mistakes that you knew you were onto something. I didn't plan it that way, you know. Mm. Oh, dongle. <laughs> it's oh, dongle. The unboxing experience is gonna be identical, just bigger. Space gray once again, and I'm hearing some pretty spectacular things about the display that's in this model. I'm also personally excited because you can drive so many displays off one of these units. Oh, dongle. And that's gonna be key for me because I use a multi-display setup and I would love to have one of these powering all those monitors. It can do up to three 6K displays and another 4K display off of a laptop. Let's see, portability check. God, it doesn't feel as huge as one pound. It's just a little bit more dense feeling. Anyway, let's check out this giant power brick. Look at this big boy right here. 140 watts. That is a monster. 96, 140. Uh, you know what? It's a lot of watts for not a much bigger unit. Okay, 14 inch model. Crack it open. Nice matte black. Look how Apple does it with the chime straight away. Look how Apple does it. Nice matte black, chiclet style, no touch bar necessary anymore. Well, another area, they're like, yeah, you didn't like it that much. All right, we're done. Notch up top, no face ID though. All right, a little strange. For me, this is a great little portable performer here, as far as I can tell. So it's a half pound heavier than the current 13 inch model. It's not that substantial when you consider the extra horsepower hiding underneath the hood. Let's get the big display out. Couple more pixels. 16 inch boots up on the chime as well. Also a nice look. Oh, here's another area that we should probably mention. And it may not have been obvious at first. Trackpad tremendously uh, increased. Uh, and the speaker areas appear to be much larger on the 16 inch model compared to the 14. Does it mean it's louder? Probably, probably sounds a bit better. And the other thing when it comes to screen to body ratio, as I turn these both around, is you will notice that the notch is the same size, but it's gonna take up a bigger portion of a 14 inch display than it is a 16 inch display. So you're going to get more screen for your money over here. The display, just at first glance, it looks incredible. Apparently as well, this thing is showing less of that bloom characteristic that the uh, iPads were showing recently. So that's, I mean, it's just, it's a very nice display keyboard. Quick brown fox, it's a... It's a very small amount of key travel. The main language. Press the return key. 
Just let me type. What was it doing there, Italian? Use English as the main language. Press the return key. You got it. I can type quick on these because I'm just used to them over the years. It's a, a very low key travel, but it's kind of, it's quiet too. It's quieter than certain previous generations. So if you're into the privacy aspect or uh, you like to work late and there's people sleeping and you're trying to be discreet, that keyboard is certainly gonna achieve that. I also think it's gonna look good for a long period of time because it's black and so it's not gonna show probably, hopefully as much wear. All right, so the key with these things, it's all about performance, right? It's all about that Apple chip inside. This is the movement for the Pro Series away, the true Pro Series away from Intel for the very first time. And so far, the initial feedback is, uh, I'm gonna use the word tremendous again one more time. I mean, these devices, anyone can use them, but it's targeted at people who can really take advantage of this increased prowess. And Kirk claims to be one of those people. We produce a fair number of videos around here, and sometimes we use laptops, sometimes we use desktops, sometimes we use DaVinci, sometimes we use Final Cut. But we thought for this video, what would be a good idea is to actually get a timeline together and see what kind of performance improvements we see with high resolution video and see what the findings are, if these things are worthwhile and uh, just how much it can improve a particular individual or company's workflow, if it's time to upgrade. Seems like it might be. This episode is sponsored by Clean My Mac, your Mac as good as new. Clean My Mac has millions of users all around the world in 185 countries and at least one user in Antarctica. Well, imagine that, it's a nice little tidbit. It has been a trusted app for more than 12 years since its launch. The app's most popular feature is a smart scan. It examines your system for system log files and user cache that is no longer needed. SmartScan also does a quick malware check and runs optimization tasks to speed up your Mac, and all of these will only take a couple of seconds. The new Mac OS Monterey is compatible with Clean My Mac from the 25th of October, and installing the new Mac OS requires a lot of storage on your Mac. Use Clean My Mac to free up the space and upgrade to the latest Mac OS. Space Lens is another great feature that allows you to see what files are taking most of the space. Another superpower of Clean My Mac is the optimization feature, which helps you increase your Mac's performance by controlling what app and processes are running on it. Clean My Mac features powerful protection modules with malware removal, so you can scan your MacBook for cryptocurrency miners, viruses, adware, and remove them instantly. Man, I hope you would know if you had a cryptocurrency miner running in the background over there. But if for whatever reason you didn't, somebody installed it on there or something, try to trick you, this one's gonna bring it up. It has beautiful design and Clean My Mac has just won a Red Dot Award and UX Design Award. You can try Clean My Mac for free right now using the link down in the description of the video. So click there, give it a shot and see what's going on inside deep within your apple computer your macbook or otherwise maybe you even got one of these new macbooks that'd be nice i can't help but feel like all these fortunes relate directly to the macbook lucky you make this choice everything comes out for the best this is the macbook pro rig that I wrangled up. So I got the 16 inch MacBook Pro here, just on a riser to elevate it. Out of that, I have an HDMI, cause I really wanted to use the HDMI port because I think we've all been missing it for a long time. HDMI'd into this LG Ultra Gear monitor. So the way I'm gonna use it is the MacBook Pro as my main video out, because this screen is absolutely minty fresh. Like it is crisp, it is resolution-y, it is really, really, smooth. I'm gonna do all my timeline and browser and editing stuff over here. Uh, I'm also gonna edit with the speakers from the MacBook Pro because I listened to a little bit of it when I was doing some music selection and they sound pretty dialed up, pretty tuned in and dialed up. So 
I'm gonna just edit like that and then see after I'm done, put the headphones on and like sort of test it in my usual workflow to see how the audio sounds. Right now I have the camera angles and all the footage and some music selected from the unboxings from yesterday. So we have two angles, we have the main angle and the side angle. I'm gonna throw those together in a, in a multi-cam and that's gonna be two H.264 clips. They're not transcoded, they're not nothing. It's straight out of the A1s, the Sony A1s. And this is a little bit of a gritty codec, like it's pretty, it's pretty rough sometimes on some systems, so I'll see how it scrubs. I don't really care about export time. Like I will take a buttery smooth timeline experience, scrubbing experience over like a twice as fast export time. I don't know why everyone is so like, Pervy about the export times. Where you're gonna save the most time is if you got a buttery some smooth some time. Some of my favorite. Then you're saving time. So that's really what I'm looking forward to. I mean, right now I just scrubbed it a bit. You can see it's pretty buttery. So it's pretty quick, it's pretty responsive. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I'm just gonna get at this edit. It's a special um, like plot. That's wild. I'm gonna take some behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, of the sure. behind the scenes. Oh, for absolutely, oh, absolutely. That'd be great. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Hello. It's crazy how you can capture the likeness. Like it looked like it's me, but on a on a jacket. You know I think. What I mean? <laughs> So I went, my, went to my mom and I'm like, mom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit my job in film. And she's like, okay, what you going to do? Well, I'm going to do some YouTube stuff and I'm going to teach at the, <laughs> I'm going to teach in the college on the side. And she goes, oh, <laughs> college professor, huh? <laughs> wow. My son's a professor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> So that's that edit is done now up until this point. That's right. In the edit, and that's then right. this will go. The edit will actually be done once this part is done. Yeah, that's right. It's the part that people are watching right now. Yeah, it's, it's very meta. It's the whole. That's all right. No, it's cool. Thing. I mean, here's the thing about these uh, laptops. It's like, yeah, initially there's some design differences. It's more squared off. The Apple logo is a little bit bigger. There's some different options for sizes and some changes in that from that standpoint. New ports. But the real thing here is the chip. Like the real mm. thing is because those other M1 uh, laptops were good already and they're a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. So what's really happening here is trying to justify the extra expenditure to go for the pro model. Because if you, I mean, what is the base? You're up over two grand. Yeah, yeah. From, from the regular M1. I don't know if you did much editing on the, on the regular yeah, M1. Yeah, I, I cut the 8K iPhone unboxing on the regular M1 iMac. Exactly. Yeah, and okay. I mean, it was chunky. This one is just so smooth. You don't even realize how fast it's going because it's just so smooth. So you notice a, a marked oh, yeah. performance yeah. improvement. And you're, you were using the uh, M1 Pro, not Max. Although my understanding here is that that's the, re the real difference there is mostly just around uh, uh, GPU. So not a yeah. huge difference for probably your timeline specifically. I don't know. Like, you know, I, I initially wanted the, the, the Max, the M1 Max. And now I'm like, who needs that? This thing is like, this thing is going crazy. Yeah. This was no hangups. This was yeah. like a uh, performance. So not, or sorry, for quality. So it was 
not ProRes, it was from H.264 for max quality editing. And the scrubbing was like instant and responsive. Even on that clip that I did uh, 12 times speed, it was flying like back and forth, no lags, no nothing. So, so that's really what this is about. That's really what it's about is, I mean, if you live on a timeline, mm -hmm. like, I mean, mm -hmm. we can speak to it from the perspective that's known to us and we're like our point of view, which is obviously in the editing realm. Mm -hmm. When, when you say, I don't know who the other stuff is for, I, I presume that individual knows which software they're going to use that is going to tax the GPU and then take advantage of it. For us, it's like, here's a, because it's hard to figure out what the competition for this system is. Is it like a gaming laptop with a real GPU? Because this is an integrated GPU, but it's not. It's also very capable. I yeah. think my main question and uh, probably the question for people would be more around uh, MacBook Pro M1 Pro mm -hmm. versus MacBook Pro M1 period. The 13 inch that Will's been using. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, but if you've been editing on that iMac mm -hmm. or a Mac mini or anything with the stock M1 outside of a small little difference to do with whatever cooling or then, uh, then, you know, you've had the experience, you've had the, yeah. the, the AB yep. and you are buying, you're buying the M1 Pro. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, I noticed it right away. Mm. I noticed it because I wasn't noticing the little hiccups that would normally happen. Like we're doing multicam, 4K multicam all the time and like playing with speed ramps and stuff like that. And on this Pro, it was so, you know that saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Mm. That's how I feel about this. It's so smooth that you're not even thinking about how fast it is because there's no hiccups to even alert you that it's, it's, it's slow. Did you get any opportunity to take advantage of uh, these ports here? Were you feeling port happy? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Right. No, no dongle, mm. no dongle at all. And the HDMI, it's like what, 60 hertz? It's only 60 hertz? Right. But it, it works, you don't need that unless yeah. you're gaming. Or what you were doing, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah it, it seems like a slam dunk. So you're gonna, you're gonna spend two grand as opposed to like, I don't know, 1300 or something. You think if, it, it works out the math works out as far as the improvement that you experienced on in this particular use case yeah for sure for sure what i'm curious about is is the max the m1 max who who does that maybe if you're doing like 3d render yeah. yeah i think a video editor could definitely use the max if you're going to go 8k like if we're doing 8k mm -hmm. definitely i would go for a max but but yeah um yeah, I think just the feel of the laptop. Like I know you've been you've been carrying it around. A well, yeah, bit I can that. speak a little bit on that. So I was playing with the 14 inch because I was curious about it having a new form factor. So I brought it home. I showed the kids. I carried it a little bit. It definitely feels fatter than the old model, just mm -hmm. because of the shape on the sides, and I guess to accommodate. Maybe they could have made it a little thinner, but you got to accommodate that HDMI port. You can see the height of it. it's a little different, and it has the feet on it now too. The display is very nice. I'm not used to the notch yet. I don't know. This is the mm. type of stuff that I think can fade away over time. It's no deal to me I at all. I would just say the, the, the weird thing about the notch is you have a notch on your phone, which has a ton of tech in it, right? Like the the uh, dot projection, mm -hmm. IR, and front facing camera is for face ID. You have a notch here that seems like it's preparing for face ID, but then it's a camera. And you're like, but there's so much room there. So it's it's a little bit confusing from that standpoint. And also the software will put certain information behind it. Yeah. If you have a, enough stuff happening in the top bar there. I heard DaVinci Resolve puts windows behind the notch and then you <laughs> yeah. can't like yeah, I know. No, <laughs> move like, them around. The software part has to get figured out, but I'm never really going to complain about more screen versus less. But we're a weird uh, situation where I almost never use the front facing camera. Yeah, but you can imagine though in the productivity world, in the the variety of jobs that people have, they can use that camera a lot, mm -hmm. and it's another area where there's been finally an improvement. They go up to 1080p, so people are like, okay, mm -hmm. great, mm -hmm. this is what I needed. But for me, you could get rid of it completely. I never use it. Yeah, same, same. But I don't mind it. But but I'm with you. I was holding the iPhone notch up to the screen and. I'm like, how did they not? How could they not fit that in? <laughs> like, like, how could they not fit so that save in? Save Face ID for the next version or whatever. Yeah, I, I guess know, so. Touch it's, ID. It's annoying, but the other adjustments are the black, uh, the black keyboard, fully blacked. Oh, out. the keyboard is so because I've been using the um, MacBook Pro with the Touch Bar previous to the M1. 
Intel. Yeah. And it's, yeah, the Intel. And it's got the butterfly keyboard. And so I've been using this keyboard a little bit to edit and it's uh, it's so much better. It's yeah. so much better. It's a little quieter, has a more of a thud to it. More confidence type. Yeah, I mean, it's just an improvement pretty much all the way around if you're willing to spend the money. One thing I think I'll say in closing though, is if you can't, if you're not gonna be living on a timeline, if you're not gonna be inside of content creation or some other way in which you're gonna tax this system, the, the regular M1 stuff is still incredibly capable at a much more approachable price. And I think it's probably still going to be the better choice for most people. Uh, as far as USD is concerned, a MacBook Air starts at $999. So you could have two of them yeah, instead of one of the base models for this. So unless you, can, uh, you have ambition or plans to go this direction and really utilize those extra features, or you feel starved for ports. <laughs> yeah. Right, which is quite possible as well. It might be worth it just to do the ports. Because <laughs> think of how much dongle money a you're spending. A thousand dollars worth of ports. Yeah, you got some serious dongle money happening. Was Will do weighing in? Or well, I want to get, oh, yeah. get Will's yes. take because I have, he said something controversial to me earlier in, in respect to the keyboard, which is that he prefers the butterfly keyboard. Go ahead, Will. Yeah, I've always been a big fan. Big, so. big butterfly guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the tactile thump to it, and um, it's it's kind of clicky. I don't know. It just feels a little bit more satisfying than the chiclet. Not, I mean, not it had to its issues. It had away. its issues, though. For sure, yeah. <laughs> Durability wise, even yeah. now, like I, I still get uh, dust stuck in it, right. and I have to like jiggle it out. <laughs> um, the membrane doesn't really work at all. Yeah. But I still appreciate the butterfly. But you were telling me you were really happy to have MagSafe back, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's good times. I've always had fond memories of it. <laughs> <laughs> it well, it's a good point. It just clicks right in there. Well, so satisfying. He has a, a framed photo on his wall of his old MagSafe <laughs> adapter. Fond, like, uh, fond memories. A nice smile. Anyway, you have the device right there. Didn't Kirk pass it to you? Yeah, yeah it's right here. So what's yeah. going on? Will you want one of these or what? Uh, yeah, can I get the max? Right. <laughs> but, no, I'm curious I mean, though. I, we, the 14, I have it at my house right now, but w uh, which form factor do you prefer? Uh, I edit on it, so 16 inch. You like the 16 yeah. and, and you? I, see, initially I wanted the 14 yeah. and I was kind of salty that you snapped it, but then I think you got me with the, because you're like, it's a bigger screen. So I use it as the video output. Yeah, it's, a, it's a bigger, nice screen. Yeah. Mini and LED. And I, I think I'm sold on that aspect of it. The size of the screen kind of bumped me up to the 16 inch. It might be the nicest monitor you have. It is, 100%. You know, yeah. unless you are you have some sort of expensive stuff hooked up to it. Uh, what can I say? Yeah, it's an improvement. It has everything that everybody was asking for. It is expensive. We need to be clear. You don't, you definitely don't need one of these to make YouTube videos. No. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need one of these. No. Uh, and you definitely don't need a maximum specification, even though you might get that impression if you are on Twitter watching people's receipts. They'll be like, that's what I need. Uh, but in most cases, I feel like you can get something, you can get a lot done with the base model and it might be the best value for money. Amazing what Apple's doing with their chips. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. They just made so much progress in such a short period of time and now uh, it's like Intel never existed. Sun said, even Popeye didn't eat his spinach until he had to. Well, that's a thinker right there. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's right. It's true. It's true.